Hello, it is 1 p.m. in Damascus at 7 p.m. in Bali. I'm Monita Rajpal. You're watching CNN, the world's news leader. This is World One, live from London. It's too late for the Syrian regime to survive. That's according to France's foreign minister. Alain Juppé is visiting Turkey, an ally of Syria until recently, to discuss the continuing violence. He says Damascus has had its chance to embrace reform and missed it. France and Turkey are now trying to step up the pressure on Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Uh, Turkish minister said this week electricity supplies to Syria could be cut off. The international community is turning up the volume of condemnation of the Assad regime. CNN, like many other news organizations, is not allowed into Syria. But Rima Maktabi is in uh, the Middle East following the story for us. She joins us now live from Dubai. And, and Rima, as we talk about this international, or this growing call internationally for the ouster or, the, uh, or for uh, Bashar al-Assad to step down, it, there is still some divided opinion on that. Yes, there are serious fears, Monita, of civil war. And these fears are coming from the international community and from Syria inside. Let's start with the international community. Russia, which still backs the Syrian regime. Diplomatic pressure mounting in Syria. We want to take a look at some of the key figures in President Assad's government. Let's begin with this gentleman right here. He is Farouk al shahra He is the vice president, 72 years old, and served as Minister of Foreign Affairs under Mr. Assad's father, Hafez al Assad. Now, uh, this gentleman here, he is the Prime Minister and he's Adel Safar. He's only been in the job since April. He's 58 and another former Foreign Minister. Over here we have uh, the post of Defense Minister. It changed hands recently, quite recently, and this is Dawood Raja. He's 64 years old. He was appointed only in August. He is a former general in the Syrian army. And then we have here the current uh, foreign minister, who is Walid al-Mu'alem, who is uh, 70 years old. He's had many years as a diplomat and was Syria's ambassador to the U.S. under the previous president. In other news this hour, a region in crisis, two leaders in conflict. British Prime Minister David Cameron is uh, uh, heading to Germany for talks with Chancellor Angela Merkel uh, amid disagreements over just how to pull... Europe out of its uh, debt crisis. And Britain, apparently, on a collision course here. So what are the chances of the two leaders finding some common ground? Frederick Pleitgen is at uh, CNN Berlin. He joins us now live with more on that. Fred, is there any chance that they can actually agree on something? Well, they might agree on a few things, but they certainly won't agree on the fundamental issues. At least there doesn't seem to be much of a chance that they actually will, because they are very big and very divisive issues. And you already pointed out the two that are the major ones. So it and all one comes down to the fact, that, at least when it comes to Berlin, is that if you want to have the benefits of being a member of the Eurozone, you've got to put your money where your mouth is, literally. Well, certainly, and the Germans are saying that the uh, that Britain should get more involved uh, in the Eurozone bailout uh, as well. Certainly, uh, yeah, Britain we'll see what kind of fireworks come out of that. Uh, Fred Pleiken there in Berlin, thank you so much. You are watching World One live from London. Cousins of Egyptian activists are rallying to Cairo's uh, Tahrir Square to show their opposition to Egypt's military rulers. They are angry that plans to change the constitution would shield the army from public scrutiny. Egypt's powerful Muslim Brotherhood is one of the groups taking part. We want to go to Cairo now and CNN's senior international correspondent Ben Wiedemann. And Ben, it seems as though the Egyptians worked really hard to get rid of one autocratic government and now it seems as though another one has taken its place. Well, certainly that's why we have, it's hard to say numbers, but tens of thousands at least who have come out into Tahrir Square. And thank you, Ben Wiedemann there in Cairo. They are victims of a trade that should have been consigned to history, but the fight against slavery is a 21st century struggle. Two weeks ago, a CNN documentary called Death in the Desert revealed the cold-blooded treatment of African refugees at the hands of Bedouin smugglers. Well, since that documentary was broadcast, hundreds of migrants in a remote part of Egypt have made it across the border into Israel. Fred Pleitgen reports on a, a glimmer of hope for those who thought they had none. African refugees enslaved, women raped, and organs stolen, all while being held captive by Bedouin smugglers in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. 
Out continues for Sepp Blatter after the president of FIFA made controversial comments to CNN about racism in football. Calls for Blatter to resign are growing, most of them from the British media. Well, let's see what some of them have been saying. The Independent has the headline, FA has a moral duty to force Blatter's removal. Uh, it goes on to say it's a comment piece. It says that Blatter, who understands everything about the value of money and how it can shape people, and apparently absolutely nothing about the meaning of racism, should be driven out into the wind and the sand. The Daily Telegraph has this headline, at the very least he should apologize, at best he should quit. The opinion piece says, how predictable, how depressing, Set Blatter continues to take the lead role in FIFA's remake of Walking with Dinosaurs. His views on racism are so prehistoric, so odious, that it begs the question, how does the Blattosaurus cling to power? But well, we should add and point out that since this article was published, Set Blatter has apologized for his remarks. And finally, this headline in the tabloid, the Daily Express, Blatter must fall on his sword. The common piece goes on to say, Set Blatter must resign from his position in charge of world football, not just because of his outdated, remote and ignorant views about racism on the pitch. He has to go also because he is so out of touch. Torrential yeah. downpours which hit the Philippines and Taiwan are now headed for Japan. Let's go to our meteorologist Ivan Cabrera at the CNN World Weather Center with details on that. Ivan. Indeed, the expression uh, raining cats and dogs applies here uh, not only for the Philippines, we're going to be doing much better here. Ivan Cabrera, thank you very much. You're watching World One live from London. Myanmar could be earning itself some new friends after being shunned for years by the U.S. and many other countries. Members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations have accepted Myanmar's bid to be the group's chair in 2014. And there was another breakthrough for the country at the ASEAN summit in Indonesia, where U.S. President Clinton is, uh, where U.S. President Barack Obama is meeting leaders from across the region. Want, want to find out now, Brianna Keeler, who is in Bali, and Brianna, that. I should say it was actually the surprise would be the U.S. Secretary of State would be uh, visiting. That's right. And Manita, she is here as well in Bali, but she is going to be visiting. President Obama announced next month she'll be visiting Myanmar and meeting with leaders there. This right. is a Brianna, thank you. Brianna Keeler there in Bali. In Spain, in the Spanish politics, uh, the honeymoon is likely to be over before it's even begun. Mariano Rajoy's uh, People's Party is widely expected to win by a landslide in Sunday's parliamentary election. Al Zidman is in Madrid. He joins us now live. And Al, how are things looking there in terms of the election that uh, it's coming up this weekend? Hi, Monita. Well, just as you say, uh, everybody, in, 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 including, it seems, the uh, leader of the Socialist Party who's running against Thank you so much. Al Goodman there in Madrid. It was one of the Taliban's boldest attacks in Afghanistan, the bombing of the Intercontinental Hotel in Kabul back in June. But now, a new Taliban video claims to show the planning and the training for the attack. CNN's Nick Payton Walsh joins us now from Kabul with the latest on that. Nick. Remarkable images here, Manita, frankly, of what the insurgency wants us to see, and that's a high level of The storm surrounding Seth Blatter's comments on racism in football is showing no sign of blowing over anytime soon, although, as Alex Thomas can tell us, the FIFA boss is uh, softening his stance, we understand. Yes, Manita, after global outrage over Seth Blatter's comments that there is no racism on the pitch and any abuse can be solved with a shake of the hand, the head of world football has finally said sorry. Well, still jam-packed, I should say. Alrighty, Alex, thank you very much. You're watching World One live from London. The U.S. protest movement Occupy Wall Street marks two months of activism with rallies across the country. Where does the movement go from here? We go live. Thursday, the U.S. protest movement Occupy Wall Street marked two months since demonstrations began with rallies across the nation. In New York, where it all began, police made 245 arrests. Nationwide, with CNN's Amber Lyons joins us now live from New York as a new day dawns there. And the question, Amber, is where does the movement go from here? Well, it's only continuing to grow as we've seen a lot of signs out here that say you can arrest one of us, two more will show that up. That said, Amber, the, as we head into um, the Thanksgiving week there in the United States, is there a sense that the, uh, the momentum could die down? No, actually, they say the momentum is going to increase during Thanksgiving. Uh, they say because people will have time off work. That's the Amber Lyons there reporting to us from New York. Now, in these uh, economic austerity times, uh, many people are concerned about their household budget and some of them are sharing money uh, and saving tips. Well, the British scientists say they've rediscovered the cheapest 
lunch around. Yep, that's what they were doing with their research time. It's called a toast sandwich. The recipe, which actually dates back to at least 1861, it's two slices of bread and as a filling, a slice of bread toasted. You can jazz it up if you like with butter, salt and pepper. Now here in Britain, it could uh, set you back to the equivalent of about 12 uh, US cents. Calorie count, about 330. But again, wondering why those uh, scientists felt that they should spend their time researching that. Now, if you're a follower of entertainment news, sad news from Hollywood and star Demi Moore, the actress says she's getting a divorce from Ashton Kutcher. Moore put out a statement asking for compassion and privacy to let her cope with the breakup. The marriage lasted for six years, which I'm sure would be quite a surprise to a lot of people. Many people said it wouldn't, it wouldn't last that long. And a 30-year mystery over the death of actress Natalie Wood is being reinvestigated. Los Angeles police say they are reopening the case. Wood drowned in 1981 during a sailing trip off the California coast. Homicide investigators say they have received additional information. Wood was best known for her roles in Rebel Without a Cause and West Side Story. You are watching World One live from London. I'm Juanita Rajpal. Thank you for joining us. We'll update you on our top stories in just a moment right here on CNN. Yeah.